Welcome to the After Six Club Ambitious Tribe podcast and webinar. I'm your host, Kathy Pajarillo Braganza, international independent LinkedIn trainer, startup founder, speaker, and encourager of dreams and ambitions. In this training series, this is where I take you to a fireside chat conversation together with our guests. We will answer your questions and thought after advice when it comes to driving ambition, which you can take action on right away and make things happen. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of the Ambitious Tribe podcast and webinar. Our guest for this episode is someone dear to me. We've met when he was, well, both of us were a little bit younger. And it was a hosting gig. And it was amazing how that moment brought us into numerous occasions. And I'm just so proud of this human being and it's amazing how this person has grown up so much with his advocacies in mind the reality of this pandemic for us entrepreneurs is somewhat influential in the media is our conversation for today ladies and gentlemen i would like to introduce to you the tv host uh, and chairperson of the 2030 youth fourth asia pacific founder of the 2030 Youth Force in the Philippines, Inc., and National Alliance of Youth Leaders, and the Chief Hatchers of a co-working space, the Hatch Hub, Jules Kia. Yeah. Hi, Cassie. Hello, Hi. everyone. To Hello. All your viewers, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for this yes, discussion. Yes, and um, I love how Hatch Hub looks like. I mean, it's so... Thank you green and it's yeah. like a popcorn machine yeah it's a popcorn maker ah, yeah amazing. for only 50 pesos oh, right. <laughs> you get un unlimited popcorn for an hour what oh my god that's yeah. snack all the and way coffee. And, and you don't even need to eat anymore oh no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway hi joel so as i've mentioned hi. Um, thank you so much for doing this and for being part of this conversation. And I love how when we were we were exchanging messages, you we were like, Ate, I just wanted to talk about the reality of this pandemic. Um, especially I'm an entrepreneur and things are going at this rate is still uncertain. Okay, so Jules, let's just dive into that. What bothers you as an extrovert in this crisis? Yeah, so I'm an extrovert and obviously being stuck in my home for the past weeks is really frustrating. I mean, there's a certain level of anxiety that I couldn't control. And as, as a media practitioner as well, I get information firsthand before it gets uh, blasted in the public. So the level of stress is really high and I couldn't contain it and sometimes I think I'm having anxiety attacks I couldn't breathe well etc so usually I just talk to my friends and uh, yeah place uh, three pillows behind me just to breathe well so it's really difficult but of course I, I, I couldn't afford to complain online because the level of stress of our front line is is, mm. is uh, higher so mm. yeah it's, it's really difficult as an extrovert because I work also as a TV host so I get to discuss with people, different people every day, every morning. And then mm -hmm. I go to class thrice a week and engage with my professors and my classmates. And then I meet different people, my customers here in the Hatch Hub. But now for the past weeks, uh, this business has been closed. We don't have income. I don't know where to get uh, right. the money to pay for the, the bills, bill. etc. So yeah, right. really frustrating. Okay, so... How are you? I mean, what is your game plan? I mean, I mean, okay, first things first, I salute you because you're not ranting or complaining or, you know, anything that involves that being sensitive of our frontliners. Second is you're, you're very influential because you are working for a state medium. And um, yeah. with knowing now that you have these challenges which a lot of us are now having how are you overcoming this what is your game plan to be honest uh well for my organizations um it's not really so challenging because for the past mm. years since we started we've been using online portals to mobilize but the thing is of course we needed to cancel all our face-to-face -face engagements 
but uh, I think the game plan should be for my business because yeah, for one, uh, we're uncertain when the when this pandemic will end because they say we're, we're yet to reach the peak, especially here in the Philippines. They say it will end by second week of April, but we're not so sure about that. So, yeah, to be honest, I have no game plan as as of now because the the main priority, the main agenda of everyone is how to survive. Yeah. Right? So I, I, so I don't know how, how to prioritize my business. Yeah. Okay, but um, haven't you ever thought of maybe you can still open? Well, there are still some restaurants who are still open for business. So they still, you know, they still make food and it's being delivered. And is it something that you wanted to also venture out on? I mean, I know, you know, when I read it in the New York Times that there are a lot of people whose businesses were closing down. Actually, the thought that they're being called as not essential. I don't know how to feel about that. I, I felt frustrated. I felt mad. I felt you know, all these mixed emotions, but I have to check on the privilege as well. Like, okay, it's just temporary and okay, non-essential. Don't get offended by the fact that you're non-essential. I mean, how can we be non-essential if we are also human beings who's trying to make a living, right? So with that in mind, okay, what do you think is going to be the new normal? Hmm. That's really difficult. Um, I've been thinking <laughs> that maybe after this pandemic, most companies would highly consider work from home setups because Definitely. obviously, Definitely. Uh, they needed to adjust during this this uh, lockdown here in the Philippines, and mm-hmm. outputs are still, Being I think, delivered. almost the same. Right. Yeah, yeah. But it would be lesser electric bills for the companies, but of course, more bills and expenses for the it's workers annoying. who stay at home. Yeah, yeah. you need, you need a, maybe a better Wi-Fi. Um, you need food, of course, when you're at home. But yeah, um, actually, my family owns a restaurant. Uh, below, below this uh, co-working space, we have a restaurant. So yeah, it's, 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 it, I think it's a good thing you mentioned about the non-essential thing. I think mm. the, the angle of that, of that idea is it's non-essential for customers to go outside for to mm-hmm. eat out but i think it's really essential hello yes, yes here. Yeah, yeah i i think um it's essential for employers because they have employees and they those yes. employees right they, yes. they especially in our case because we're just a small restaurant so they earn daily so mm-hmm. what's the case for them they're not earning every day so it's a but right now we're we're doing a skeletal force uh workforce. So we trimmed down our, our workforce from I think from ten ten people to two only. So how about how about the eight? So what we're doing is every week we we send out uh food packs for them oh, in their so own nice. places. Right. But it's really difficult for us because I think so far, the the whole income per day, we, we only get uh, half of it because we're even. just yes. or not even yeah because right. we're 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 using only delivery deliveries and pickup system as at the moment. Mm-hmm. And good thing we have the grab food the what what's the other thing uh, the food food panda, panda lala, 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 food. Lala, even angkas That's, I think yes. launch the angkas food so. Right. It's a really great help for food for food businesses. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you know when um, okay. So I am in the cusp as well on okay. I we need to earn money so that we get to pay for our bills. But I am mm-hmm. also in this position wherein you have to be sensitive not to sell anything because a lot of people are still having their money on hold but the thing is you have to also be in the middle where it okay i have to think about me first and then mm-hmm. if you don't want to buy it well that's on you if you want to buy it hey i'm helping yeah. you so mm-hmm. i don't know i mean i guess people nowadays when i when i've been seeing everything on social media there are pros and cons like for me it's amazing how people are more sensitive with each other 
there, it's amazing how people are helping people like crazy. I've seen people like pulling in 300,000 in a week, 500,000 in right. like how many mm -hmm. days? Like people can mm -hmm. do that. So hello, humanity yeah. restored. And, but still, we are still, I mean, on, below that, we, we, we still get to see on the level that, okay, how are we going to do digital transformation? At the same time, you're not hurting anybody's feelings. At the same time, mm -hmm. you're still serving and you're helping. I mean, it's crazy. But having said that, you in the 2030 Youth Force talking about the sustainable goals. So it's, how are you going to proceed with this advocacy of yours in relation to not being able to do what was usual for you plus the yeah. UN what is your next step with the UN I mean I, mean, I don't know I mean what is next yeah that's how a good you, question initially yeah yeah. yeah right because initially our task was to mainstream the sustainable development goals in our own youth sectors in our own countries but right, right now obviously it's a it's a global problem the um, for the, I think for the past week, the UNDP reached out to us and they're trying to tap our network to be able to get data with the youth on how this pandemic is affecting their lives. Because I think most countries are on lockdown right now or on quarantine. So Super, yes. Yeah, it's, we're more on, we're, more, we're tasked now to gather data on the ground and thankfully we have internet but not everyone has internet Correct. so that's another limitation right so Correct. it's and we we're not able to go to them anymore because we're not allowed to go out the, the our <laughs> houses so yeah that's another limitation so but so far that's the direction of the UNDP from the 2030 Youth Force Asia Pacific we're handling seven countries right now and my as chairperson right now, my plan is to expand in several countries in the Asia Pacific before mm. my term ends by October. And this is a huge, uh, um, it's a huge hindrance for for us to expand. I mean, my goal is to 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 establish more national chapters in most countries in the ASEAN. But now I don't know if we could still even get the grants we're applying at because most likely the budget have been. Yeah. allocated to covid response and it's understandable so it's really hard yeah okay so i guess this is something that we all can think about like how can the youth participate and still help in their own little way right mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. well i hope that you know i mean you'll be able to figure it out and um you know okay so i guess this the, the second wonderful thing about the social media in the time of the internet in comparison to how it was in the 80s when it was like totally locked down or you know i mean yeah. nothing is happening no brown out black out whatever mm -hmm. no nothing mm -hmm. we are thankful mm -hmm. we're we're super privileged because we have twitter we have social media we have facebook so on and so forth okay so this is right. the time for collaboration and you, you've mentioned that you've had this um, logistics partners who has been delivering food at least, so that's one collaboration. But how else do you see collaboration in this time of crisis? And how else can we collaborate in terms of making your goals um, happen? Yeah. I think at the moment, the main priority of people is, number one, to survive. Of course, you need to survive. You need food. <laughs> number Most two is... Hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Number yeah. two is how how we could support our frontliners, yeah. right? In, in the in the time when there's a uh, um, limitations with the resources, with our PPEs, with our with all the logistics that are needed by our frontliners. So mm. it's yeah. You mentioned a while ago. It's really amazing how youth groups and non youth groups are collaborating and are able to uh, shell out funds from different uh, people. So it's really amazing that they're able to do that. But the question is, until when can they do that? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because we don't know when this pandemic will end. And those resources will definitely run out. 
right? So yeah, that's right, another yeah. question because right now we're in a time bound until second week of April. But as mentioned, we're not really sure if it will end How by long? second week. So yeah, yeah so yeah, so I, I think number one, um, well, so far on, on, on the survival aspect, there are a lot of platforms right now that are offering for online markets, right? So it, that's another opportunity. I have a friend um, who's uh, coordinating with some farmers from the north. Wow, that's because, beautiful. Uh, yeah. yeah, because the, the, their, um, their vegetables aren't uh, sold uh, well to the market. So they're trying to um, coordinate with different LGUs to directly distribute those uh, goods to the LGU so they could give out to to the markets, households. Online markets. To yeah. The markets. Yeah, online markets. But again, with online markets, not everyone has um, um, connection yeah. to the internet. So that's another hindrance. And let's talk about Pasig, of course. Uh, Mayor Nico Soto. So, uh, <laughs> he, he, they launched they launch this, uh, what is this? The, the, the mobile market. Mobile market. Mobile it's market. You know, I, yeah. I, I was kidding also with some friends of mine. I was telling them, guys, Government, can you just like cut, copy, paste? I mean, th there's no score anyway if you're gonna copy whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 it works. It's a validation. It's a business in itself, and it validated. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. And what? Yeah, and the the beauty with this uh mobile market is um right. it it um it doesn't let people. I mean, it, it goes straight to their houses, right? I mean, outside like or they just station it. nearby. Yeah, so they do, it's it's a it's a response to social distancing, right? So you don't need to go and flock in the market anymore. And Mayor Vico even mentioned that he it's not a it's not a unique uh, project from Pasig. He also copied it from another LGU. So yeah, it, I think it's another it's another another culture that we need to build among LGUs to to mainstream the best practices and maybe they could copy it and implement it in their LGU. So, yeah, because the thing is, social media right now, sometimes it's it's quite toxic. Like, uh, people keep on comparing their mayors. Aye, I, mean, they, aye, aye. Yes. I, I mean, of course, they have the right, for, right to do that, all for accountability, but not to the point on, you know... Um, making fun with the faces with the voice of their mayor it's it's too below the belt it's unbecoming <laughs> yeah no no no, no but <laughs> maybe they're true. bored i don't know no i mean you know i mean if if you're frustrated already of course how else are you going to voice out because there's some they're hopeless they're helpless they wanted you know you know i mean how the i mean because they voted for these people they expect a lot from them yeah, yeah. and you know i've heard as well that um, I know we don't want. I don't want to talk about politics in here, but okay, I'm just gonna say it anyway. But I heard as well from reliable sources that we might have. Well, not might. It's on Monday. It seems like it, there's going to be an announcement that April 15 is not the day that this is gonna end. I mean, of course, for me, how can you actually say something that it's gonna end on April 15? It's like, hey, pandemic, end it already. I mean, how can we put um, an end to that, <laughs> right? But yeah. yeah, so what I'm just saying here is that you also, let's talk about, well, we've talked about your endeavor, which is the Hatch Hub. We've talked about your, your 20, 30 youth force. Now let's talk about being a very influential person, knowing you are working for the media. Jules, how do you even handle knowing that you're in a state medium and um, you have firsthand knowledge with everything? And yet, you're still as composed. You're still as you're still a kid. I mean, for me, in my eyes, you will always be, um, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> you're still someone who's still exploring life, which is great. Um, yeah. You're taking it lightly, but I know being in that position is huge. So, yeah. what responsibilities do you have that the youth should also do? Yeah, you know what? I think it's uh, being part of uh, the state media, PTV4. Guess what? I'm, I'm, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll be on my eighth year with PTV this year. Eighth year. Wow. Yeah, I started in 2012. I was 
still a student during that time. Yes. So imagine eight years with yes. TPV. I had several opportunities from different networks, but I chose to stay. Why? Because I told myself before that I really wanted to serve the people through the government. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm able to meet that, um, that goal through PTV4. But it's been a challenge since 2012. I mean, I've been an activist in UP since 2009 until 2014. And then I had to transform immediately and speak on behalf of the government. Imagine that, yes. being an activist. Um, criticizing the government and then being a mouthpiece of the government. It's really hard. But along the way, I was able to learn uh, learn it the hard way, actually. I was suspended so- for... I was suspended... When was that? June 2019. Was yeah. it because of the, um, the one with Tulfo? With the, no. That was, I, uh, that was in 2018. I wasn't suspended. I'm actually proud of PTV because they <laughs> chose me over them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah but, I'm not talking about it anymore. But um, just yeah, for, yeah. for the viewers, uh, there was an instance on TV that Mr. Tulfo actually hit back on um, Jules on yeah. TV. On prime time. <laughs> on prime time. And he, you know, okay. Go on. You're just amazing. Yeah, so, how, how do you compose yourself again? Go ahead. Yeah. My, my problem right now, and I'm still trying to learn how to do it, is to... <laughs> I'm not, I mean, they wouldn't understand that my social media <laughs> is my social media. Yeah. But like the, the mere fact that I'm liking tweets... What's apparently that? someone's mo- liking tweets. Apparently someone's monitoring it. Yeah. Okay, and you got suspended because of you like something that is yeah. Actually n- not about that. My suspension last year was okay. you know, I forgot about the issue, but it's it it's about social media. But the thing is, I used that as an opportunity and PTV believed in my uh, counter proposal. I, I told them we need a social media policy for the employers right. because in the first place, um, there's no black and white to to guide us. Mm. So I I wrote a policy and then they reviewed it and <laughs> so I was able to I was able to do it. Wow! It, it was a one week suspension. Yeah. So they I gave you a chance it. to write in one week also. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And a beauty rest without waking up very yeah. early. My recent one is actually it was a few weeks ago, but I wasn't suspended. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wasn't suspended. I wasn't suspended, but I was reprimanded by some of the bosses. Okay, because, because of because yeah, apparently I tweeted some there, there were some tweets out of my frustration. Yeah. But the thing is, what, what I usually do is, I don't mention a person or anything. Yeah. It's just an emotion. But maybe they, they just connected the dots and they, they, they think okay. it's about... Yeah, yeah. So, and then, so I deleted those tweets. It, it, it really broke my heart because it's like erase this principle, erase this principle. And then the, the, next, the next reprimand was they saw my likes on Twitter. So... I was really in dis. I was really in disbelief because really even liking tweets, I I I had, I I need to. I mean, not like tweets that I think are favorable from my end. So, yeah, I mean, in the middle of in the middle of this crisis, I could not afford to lose a job. Okay, of course. So, right. So I I just had to follow and maybe just accept the fact that yeah, I'm working. In with the government but uh, what i usually say is my principal is not a personality my principal are the people i'm working for the people and not for any personality but of course it's really hard to um convince all bosses about that so as you say i'm still young and i'm still trying to um 
explain and convince them but i think it's re- it will really take a long process so for now i'm just playing the game i'm i'm being obedient but, but i don't know until when but so far i'm i'm just obeying rules right now <laughs> okay so you're saying cuz you know again um being in in actually not even in state media i mean the fact that you are part of media regardless of what channel it is you are yeah. um, an influencer you are someone that the youth also follow or the greater mass because you have the voice um so i guess this is a good practice also for mindfulness on okay yeah. if i said this how is it going to how is it going to be conveyed or understood by the other party that's true yeah mm-hmm. yeah there were many times after that incident i was uh, typing already with my phone to tweet right. this and i think then i i had a i had to pause and think will this uh be oh, help misunderstood you. yeah yeah will this be a misunderstood so i'll just delete it and then just keep it to myself or maybe <laughs> just talk to my friends just and chat with them no one yeah i just go to the chat rooms and share it there not anymore on facebook i guess it's, that's a, I, I guess that's a really good um uh practice as well that you know it doesn't ha- you don't have to be in media honestly just to to be mindful of what you say yeah Um, you just really have to be sensitive about other people's feelings, other people's, yeah. you know, how they, how they um, perceive you and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. amazing. Okay, so okay, so now that we've we've talked about you as a medium, you in, in media rather in media as an entrepreneur, as you know, in 2030, youth force and all these how do you get to put these things together i mean what i mean there's a lot of things right so how do you mm. put it into an avatar like okay this is jewels and this is my personality how does it all match given you have restriction here yeah and then this one you have to be a mm-hmm. voice how do you how do you position yourself who are you well on the on, on the practical side on how i do it on a daily basis i work well with my schedule so i literally i mean type down everything using my note not it's a manual note on 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 using my iphone so just on notes and then bullet forms everything that i need to do per day and then i just check it out i just check it if i i'm able to deliver it but as as a person how how i'm able to do it hmm That's pretty difficult. I think everything just fell into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but to be honest, when people ask me what what I want to be or where I want to be, uh, maybe by now. in five years from now, that will be I'll be thirty four, thirty five. I'm turning twenty nine uh, next month. Oh my god! So I'm I'm not really sure yet about that. So that's okay. I, I I'm I'm just I have different. I mean, I have uh, three options for mm. for my plans in the future. But so far, I'm with my option one. That's the media track, and then let's see how it goes. If it could drive me to my second option, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I love this conversation. There are a lot of things that I learned from you, and you know, for me, I truly believe that age is nothing but a number. It's re- it will all come down to the wisdom and how you learn from your experiences and who you mm-hmm. surround with, and um, having to know that you've surrounded yourself with all sorts of personalities and character and media plus being mm-hmm. in a state oh, and I, I, I guess, I mean, not really, I guess, I know pretty sure that there are a lot of toxicity as well. Jules, one more question. How do you handle toxicity in a world where you are, are surrounded by government? Whatever. <laughs> I go oh, to- I go to, yeah, I go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, also get anxiety, ba? Week. Yeah, do you get anxiety? In the you past? know, late yeah, lately, lately, especially during the pandemic, my first anxiety attack was when I quit smoking. Congrats. Three years ago, yeah, mm-hmm. it was three years ago. So I thought uh, I had this. Uh, what do we call that? Uh, the withdrawals. 
Withdrawal? It was cold turkey from yeah. my end. Yeah, withdrawal. Yeah, withdrawal. So they say it was withdrawal. I, I had difficulty breathing, etc. So I had myself, uh, I went to the ER and then the doctor was just laughing at me. He said, it's just a psychological thing. Right. So, yeah. So when I was explaining what I, what I was feeling during that moment, the doctor said, it's just all in the mind, and then suddenly I was able to breathe well. So yeah, apparently it's just in the mind. <laughs> but right, yeah, but right now the anxiety is really bad, and I, I actually tweeted about this, and then some of my friends, actually I think more than ten of them, reach out to me that they're also experiencing it. So apparently, what is this? What 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 are you experiencing? What is this? The anxiety of uh, uncertainty. Anxiety attacks. Yeah, anxiety yeah, of what? Of uncertainty. Okay. Of uncertainty because of the information. I mean, the numbers are rising yeah. with the infected of, with COVID. So, yeah, some of them also said that they had difficulty breathing. Um, yeah, so I think it's important just to open the idea that they're not alone. And some people are also experiencing it. And maybe people could just share uh, tips on how they deal with it. So far, what I do, I, I downloaded this app. As a, Calm app. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, calm. So, oh, like, so calm far, app. it helped me. Yeah, it, meditation. It helped me sleep well. Yeah, the meditation, etc. And then last, this week, my sister taught me to do yoga. So apparently, it's really, it's really good, huh? Yes. Uh, aside from the stretching, I thought it's just uh, a art balancing art, app, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's nice. It's nice. So yeah, actually, after this, I'll, I'll be doing yoga before sleeping. So yeah, so. Apparently, uh, one of my takeaways with this uh, lockdown, I have uh, learned so many basic things and appreciate basic things as well, which is really actually important as well. Mm. I mean, my family is now more bonded. Every day we're just at the restaurant, eating okay. and looking at each other, talking. Yeah, so I'm. I mean, I'm not romanticizing COVID nineteen, but. On the other hand, there's also the beauty pro. in it because yeah, the pro because you're able to appreciate the small things. You yeah. know, I agree. I agree. You know, um, as I was, I mean, the the, the way that I view things, um, I also I, I also get my anxiety attacks and depression. I had mild depression before and anxiety attacks. But the way that I also like handled it now, I've never. I, thank God, I still don't have it. There was a night. Though that I felt when I read how many people were having um, COVID, and then suddenly there's one, you know, eh, eh, that that meme. <laughs> so I saw like mm. what I felt was okay. How do you switch this idea, or no, not idea, this reality that okay, people are suffering, the frontliners are in, you know, are are at risk. And um, you, on the other hand, is just at home. Like, what are you doing in your life? So I was asking myself that. And how else am I going to help other people if I'm just staying at home? But the thing is, having to do this, I feel and I think that God and the universe, I don't know if the viewers and you or whoever, I mean, whoever is listening to this, if you believe in God and the universe, I think he is teach he or she, it, they, <laughs> Is, is teaching as a lesson, like going back to the essentials on why humanity is here. It's for our family. Yeah. It's for, you know, mindfulness that not to take things for granted. It's the little things. For the environment. Want, for the yeah. environment. Exactly. And do you remember when um, the koalas um, were burnt down? And then there's another one that happened. This one was still a boggling um, situation when the deers 3,000 deers I think or 8,000 deers suddenly just died and they don't know why I mean I mean and then the, the rest of the other animals as well it's like for me like what are the what are what is happening why are the animals who is not doing anything bad to us I mean it, yeah. they don't deserve this right and then here mm -hmm. we go and having to you know um experiencing this virus what if we are the virus and then we are just being being cleansed you know so there are a lot of things that you know had to go in and you're right about meditation you're right about i agree with you that you just have to calm yourself and 
go straight back to your family and there's still always a good thing i guess this is also number three i guess it's more of like thinking of what are you grateful for how do you be how do you i mean be grateful for something every day and it just you know just yeah. helps you mentally um Okay, but not to discount, of course, those with anxiety and depression. Those are serious things. I mean, serious conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jules, I've, I've said a lot of things. And um, I just wanted to know also, what is next for you? I mean, I, I, you've had two weeks. Well, what else? Well, what, what's next for you? Have you ever thought of that? After the pandemic? Or after the things I'm doing now, I think now. now, yeah, now. I mean, now, what what are you gonna do? What are right? So that's a very difficult question, but I is. think um, I I read an article from the U.S. since they're the number one country right now with the most cases. There, there's this very frightening. Uh, news which actually triggered my anxiety that mm. they, they that, that article uh, says that covid might be a seasonal thing oh my goodness right? oh my goodness no hopefully please. not right? so hopefully what is not this? so winter spring summer uh, covid <laughs> uh, yeah yeah they say it it, it might uh, trigger during uh, winters winter so i don't know how it will trigger uh, and affect industries but if that happens, um, obviously wow. we'll have Arch. a new weird normal. And I mean, I love travel, and yeah. all of that will change. Actually, this uh, schedule I'm supposed to go to several conferences in Europe, and those are canceled already. So those are some of the things. But what bothers me more, as a citizen, as a person this um stay at home thing is a matter of privilege mm. um it's a class issue um we 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 are able to stock up our food or and for for weeks even for a month but let us also remember those families who are earning on a daily daily basis who aren't able to panic Perfect. buy and just yeah. panic right <laughs> <laughs> right, what they do is only panic, and they couldn't buy anything because One of their of their yeah because of their income. Yeah, have you have you have you seen that 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 yeah. one million, million receipt? grocery crazy? Yeah. And they had that that they even posted it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a matter of privilege. It's a class issue, and I hope this government. I think no government in the world was ready for this. No, no one was ready no. for this. Right? No, no. no one was ready for this. I mean, even Japan, right? No. You know, <laughs> but which is funny. You know, Olympics, I mean, yeah, I've been thinking, eh, but how can, this, how can this pandemic be happening knowing we have presidents who are, I just don't know, fill in the blank. So <laughs> I can't say how to ever say it, but I guess at the end of the day, we're all still humans. And who, will, who could have ever thought? that we're going to get yeah. into this kind of situation. Right, right, Time right. to be alive, right? Yeah. I, I, I was actually discussing, yeah, discussing with one um, yeah. staff from the UNDP. Most likely, the discussions in the UN will really revolve on how governments, on how the private sector and NGOs could respond, respond. To, this, respond yeah. to this kind of, this kind of uh, pandemic. I mean, yeah, what are the protocols? Again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I heard also yeah. that in, in times of crisis, like we have, let's just, I, I don't know if this is real, but I hope, you know, if someone is listening and if it, correct me if I'm wrong, they were saying that pure gold, every time that there is a pure gold um, being put up or any grocery that's being put up, um, they have this, uh, obligation that if there's anything that happened pure gold should give x amount of goods um oh, yeah? for the crisis mm -hmm. i don't know if I've, that's, that's true but again having said that it's still a business <laughs> at the end of the day and then you're just gonna give yeah. out food their inventory i mean it's just you know it just boggles me but you're right i mean how i think this is a policy that needs to be met like how will you be able to have insurance for the people right 
mm-hmm. have the Maslow's need, you know, the triangle of need. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. okay, Jules, um, what other t- key takeaway do you have uh, that you wanted to share? Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Well, maybe just on the, the more relatable yeah. stuff for everyone. Yeah, we need to communicate with with anyone because I think if something bothers you and you don't have any outlet, it could really affect your mental health. Mm. So just talk, uh, look for an outlet. If you need a social media account, look for groups, talk to your parents, talk to your friends. You need to release it. Because it could really affect your mental health. So Work responsibly, guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right, right. And yeah, um, for people, I mean, there's an influx of information every day. And some people... Um, Just reshare so. intent. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes there's an intent to misinform people. So be very wise before sharing information. Especially during this time. This is the this is the worst time to share fake news because we're talking about the survival of people. Mm. So please be extra wise. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. I, they were saying just stick to one medium and just that. Okay. So, um, all right, you guys, I know this is such a long conversation and I wish <laughs> that I would know we can be we can talk more, Jules. Maybe um, let's have another fireside uh, conversation sure. about mm-hmm. men, maybe mental health. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. But for now, you guys, uh, would you, if you would want to uh, participate and take part for the 2030 Youth Force in the Philippines, reach out to Jules. Uh, he will be needing all the help that you know the UN and the world needs. And his handle is at Jules Giang. I'm gonna write it down, um, down below in the description box. And you may also sign up. There's a sheet. Also, if you have any queries or anything that you want to tell him, um, just sign up below. And um, yeah, and he'll be able to access it. So you guys, um, I hope you were able to get a lot of key takeaway from here. And please be responsible. No to fake news. Take good care of your mental health and each other. All right. So uh, you guys, remember to hit like, subscribe. Hit the notification button <laughs> to get yourself even more informed about our succeeding episodes. Once again, this is Cassie Pahari with Laganza, your host, and this is your ambitious drive. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to us. All right. Bye. Bye. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Mm-hmm.